Here's another example. An object is thrown upwards with an initial speed of 3 meters per second. How high does it go? An object is thrown upwards with an initial speed of 3 meters per second. How high does it go? Uh, please copy that into your notes and then uh, try the problem. So remember to pause the video and try the problem on your own before uh, you proceed, please. Remember our goal is not just to get the problem right, but to build systematic approach and systematic notation that will help us on harder problems as well. So I hope you are trying to be as systematic as possible and to use the same notation that we've already seen demonstrated in the videos. Well, step one in our systematic approach is to draw the object's path. Seems like there's a pretty simple path here. It starts around the ground and then it's thrown up. That's our path. Let's try to build as much information as we can into that path. The initial speed was 3 meters per second. And we'd always like to indicate a sign. Now, of course, a speed does not have a sign, but it would be more useful if we could show the velocity with the sign. So let's choose a positive direction. It's usually best to choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. Since we're moving up, uh, let's choose up as our positive direction. So we'll say the positive y-axis is up. And then we can go back and say that the initial velocity was positive 3 meters per second. Then the question is, how high does it go? Um, so we can indicate that they're asking us here for the displacement. How high does it go? Now actually, no, I think that's not quite right. Not quite right. This is a little technicality. But they're not quite asking us for the displacement, because remember the displacement is a signed number. But they're not really asking us for a signed number, right? It would be kind of weird to say, um, how high does it go? Uh, it goes positive 3 meters high. That sounds a little weird. Uh, when someone asks you how high something is going, they're not really asking you for a signed number, which means they're not really asking us for the displacement, they're asking us for the magnitude of the displacement. This is maybe a minor technicality, but the problem is really just asking us for the magnitude of the displacement. Um, well, I, maybe you remember that I like to use a dot to indicate when we're focusing on magnitudes. So I'm going to put a dot here to show that they're not quite asking us for delta y, they're asking us for the magnitude of delta y. Um, they're asking us for an unsigned number. And the reason is, again, it would just be a little weird to say that, the, um, that it went plus 10 meters high. If someone asks you how high something went, you want to answer just with an unsigned number. You might say it went 6 meters high. Well, since we're going to answer with an unsigned number, we're really not finding the displacement. We're just finding the magnitude of the displacement. So I'll indicate that with a dot. Signs are so important that it's useful to even think about a little technicality like that. Okay, so um, now we've already indicated what the velocity was here at the initial point. So it seems like it would be symmetric if we could indicate what the velocity is at this point as well. And you really should be able to do that. Now the question was asking, how high does the object go? How high does the object go? Well, if you think about it, what they're really asking is, how high does the object go before it reaches its peak? The peak is how high the object is going, right? So the question is really asking, how high does the object reach at its peak? So this point up here must be the peak of the trajectory. That's the highest that the object is going to go. But we already know what the object's velocity is at its peak. At its peak, the object's velocity is zero. That was the really important hidden information in this problem. The important hidden information is that the final position really here is the peak. That's how high you can go. I hope that you also took the time to draw velocity and acceleration vectors. We know the velocity vector should be pointing up because the object is moving up. And we know the acceleration should be pointing down because this is a normal vertical projectile motion free fall problem. Gravity is, pointing, uh, is pulling the object down, so the acceleration is down. All right, so those are all the types of things that would be useful to write down in your step one. Draw the path and various other things that are associated with the path. Uh, step two is to choose a positive direction, but we already did that. Step three, breaking things into components, that's not really relevant for one-dimensional motion. So we go on to step four, writing down our kinematics variables. And 
since we're doing projectile motion, we can automatically plug in for the vertical acceleration. 9.8 meters per second squared. And we should automatically plug in the sine. Well, we've chosen up to be our positive direction, so the vertical acceleration has to be negative. A lot of people might mess that up uh, at this point now, but since we're in the habit of always, uh, always thinking about the signs, um, hopefully we're going to think about this issue and see that since we chose up to be positive and the acceleration is down, the acceleration has to be negative. Okay, now let's plug in the other information that we have. Well, the displacement is what the question is asking us for. Although remember, as a little technicality, remember it's really asking us for the magnitude of the displacement. So I'm going to label that the displacement is kind of a sub-question. Finding the displacement is a sub-question because the main question was the magnitude of the displacement. Maybe, maybe that's being a little bit too picky, but I, I want to be careful. So the sub-question is asking for the overall displacement, and then we'll use that to answer the main question, which is the magnitude of the displacement. All right, our initial velocity uh, was our positive 3 meters per second. Don't forget to indicate the sign. And again, we're going to get in the habit now of writing down the units when we write the givens down underneath the kinematics um, variables, although we won't plug in the units into the equation. All right, and the very important hint information is that the final velocity was zero. So this is where uh, people would be most likely to get messed up on this problem. A lot of people might not realize that the final velocity was zero. Well, how could you help yourself if you were in that situation? Well, suppose that you haven't really realized yet that the final velocity is zero. Well, then you should be saying to yourself, well, gee, um, I only know two numbers so far. I need a third number. I know that I can't go on to step five and pick a kinematics equation until I've got my third number. Well, that means that whoever wrote the problem is morally obligated to give me my third number. They must have hidden it some way. And hopefully then you would keep rereading the problem more and more carefully until you realized that when they said how high could the object go, they really meant how high could it go before it reaches its peak. So our final velocity is the peak velocity, which is zero meters per second. Now we have three numbers, so we can pick the kinematics equation that is missing time. We can pick the kinematics equation that's missing the time. All right. Here's the kinematics equation that's missing the time. Now, I think some of you might have been inclined to put a negative sign here. Um, you might have been inclined to put a negative sign here since we know the acceleration is going to be negative. But based on the way that we're solving the problems in these videos, it would not be appropriate to put a negative sign here. We know that there are some alternative ways for solving these problems that some textbooks use where it might be appropriate to put a negative sign here, but it's not appropriate for us. And the reason is that the sign of the acceleration is included in the variable. This A is already including its own negative sign. So it would be kind of double counting to put another negative sign over there, over here. I hope that's kind of clear. Um, we should stick with this original plus sign. Um, and we know that when we plug in for A, that's when we're going to be putting in the negative. Maybe that'll be clearer in a second. So plugging in here, we have final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is positive three plus two. Now we plug in for the acceleration. And now we plug in the negative 9.8. So you can see, now that we're plugging in for the acceleration, now we get the opportunity to put the negative sign in. Now maybe you can see why it would have been a mistake to also put a negative sign, a subtraction sign over here. Uh, because then we'd be canceling this negative sign over here. It doesn't make sense to indicate the downward acceleration twice. So since we're going to be indicating the um, sign of the acceleration in the variable itself, it doesn't make sense to also subtract this term. We should just stick with the original plus sign and then the sign will come out correctly when we plug in a negative number for the acceleration. And our displacement here is what we're trying to figure out. Zero squared is zero, three squared is nine. Using our calculator, we would find that two times negative 9.8 is negative 19.6 times delta y. There's a number of ways that you might go about solving this equation. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the 9, uh, move the 9 away. So remember, we need to get the delta y by itself. We need to get the delta y by itself. Well, the first thing we have to do is get rid of this 9 over here. We can't get rid of the 19.6 first. First of all, we have to get rid of the 9. Um, how can we get rid of the 9? Well, 
Um, remember, we want to do the opposite. Maybe it would help to indicate that what we're really doing is adding 9 to the, the right-hand side. And now you can see the way to get rid of the 9 is by subtracting it from both sides. So we need to subtract the 9 from both sides. Now it gives us minus 9 equals negative 19.6 delta y. Here's where some people might make an algebra mistake. You can't just move the positive 9 from the right-hand side to a positive 9 on the left-hand side. What we're doing is subtracting 9 from both sides. Well, when you subtract 9 from the right-hand side, the 9 disappears. But when you subtract 9 from the left-hand side, it becomes a negative 9. So make sure that you got a negative 9 here on the left-hand side now, because we were subtracting 9 from both sides.